Welcome to Positive Filter with your host, Fuller Wilkerson, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help along the way. Please join me in this journey for self-improvement, and I hope what I have to share will make you a better person, thus making the world a better place. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, Positive Filter listeners. Uh, Philip Wilkerson back with another impromptu podcast. I did like three so far during this conference. I did also go to sessions, I promise. Um, I'm actually just coming out of a awards and dinner, or I mean lunch, lunch. And uh, I'm joined by uh, the Eastern Ace rising star, Natalie. Uh, pronounce your last name, please. Tag Lavori. Tag Lavori. And so... I had the great pleasure of uh, doing a podcast with her. I really want to talk about, you know, her rising starness and um, just things about this conference. So uh, before we get started with this episode, uh, Natalie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Thanks for having me. Um, I have been in career services for a little over three years now. Been involved in Eastern Ace um, as a committee member first for PR and marketing. Then I became the chair for PR and marketing in this past year. And now I was just awarded the Rising Star Award, which is super exciting, especially now being at the conference back in person. And I really enjoy my niche area in career services and career education in particular. I love it. So I want to speak to this. This is this your first in-person conference with Eastern Ace? Correct, yep. What was, you know, I asked this to earlier people, um, did this meet expectations, exceed expectations, below expectations for you, knowing that you did go to the virtual ones, like your thought, you know, like getting hyped and getting excited, where, where are you in that, that yeah. feeling? I think it definitely exceeded. I think we're in Atlantic City at the Borgata. It's a beautiful venue. Mm -hmm. The sessions that I've been to so far has been outstanding. It's just different, you know, being back in person and feeling the people's energy, the hype up of being here and really being fully present in the sessions and connecting with folks and networking is just different online when, you know, you could easily be checking email and things like that and get sidetracked just working from home and going back and forth from the conference virtually to working and getting distracted by things. I feel like it's such an immersive experience being back in person. I love it. And so, um, you know, talk to that. I know that uh, mentorship meant a lot and people pulling you on. And I, I've said this earlier too, like um, I only got involved because I got the individual reach out from Jill and Jen separately, randomly. I joked that uh, they said they wanted to talk to me. I thought I was in trouble. So can you talk about that? Like, how did like how did you get pulled into this? Yeah. Ironically enough, it was Jill as well. All right. She has a way to, I think, connect with people and really see people's strengths and where they can contribute to this organization and also um, let people know how the organization, likewise, can benefit their professional development, their growth and success in their day job, their full-time job. And so starting off as a committee member, I did that with my previous colleague at my previous institution. I started working with her on that mm. as a committee member, kind of light, got, in, got to know a few folks on that particular committee. Again, the conferences were all virtual, so it was kind of hard to connect with folks outside of the committee yeah. at the time. Um, but then now there was an opportunity for a vacancy in chairing the committee that I was already a member of, so I kind of knew some of the ropes of processes and protocols and also with the new vision of the strategic plan they had some goals that I felt like I could help contribute with innovation and implementing stories on Instagram, implementing new types of graphics and sort of posting and tagging on the different platforms to really make it a comprehensive um, social media effort. Um, and so that's been super exciting. So that's kind of where it all started and it's continuing to grow. There's some changes coming up in the next year with PR marketing, but it's obviously also been a little challenging with the efforts in terms of committee members. Yeah, so did you know each other previously? Jill and I, we worked together for a brief time during um, my time at Stevens Institute. So you knew her, okay. Yep. I was about to say, because I think that, that that had a basis of yeah. what you could do, but I was going to say on the flip side, I, had no, I don't know anybody, yeah. so I was like, uh, maybe uh, that faith was a blind faith. Yeah. I'm like, they must have got the wrong one, but she already, she already knew you out, outside yeah. of work. Yep. Yeah. Hashtag blessed. Yep. Hashtag, I use too many hashtags. Um, you know. All right, I just want to throw that in there. I like doing that randomly. <laughs> but, um, so, I also want to speak to this as a young professional. You're young. I, I feel like I'm in the middle child thing. Um, as you're going through this experience and you're, and you're 
doing these things, uh, where is there any form of intimidation getting involved? Uh, and when I say that transparently, I told you earlier, mm-hmm. I've gone to multiple conferences um, and I just didn't get to where I wanted to be mm-hmm. in regards to this until recently during the COVID years. And I wish mm-hmm. I'd go back in the time machine. I was like, man, it's because I was intimidated. I saw people that had positions and I was like, mm-hmm. I, I didn't know them. Mm-hmm. And then I realized I get to know them and I was like, no big deal now. Yeah. So was that for you um, at, as well? That's, I would say like, depending on context, I am a little introverted and sort of intimidated in certain environments and certain situations, but I think the power of networking and connection and who introduces you to folks is really important too and empowering. And so from there it kind of builds out and you meet new people and things like that. But I think virtually I was itching for that connection piece. And so it was easy to get behind a screen, I think, to kind of take the baby steps towards that that now when I'm in person meeting people for the first time it was like second nature to me by now but I could definitely see sort of if I started in the middle of the pandemic being intimidated by that yes yeah, so, so I get that uh, and I'm just playing around because you hear this background noise so for those that are listening I think it's because we got we're like in the hallway now this is like gorilla gorilla podcasting <laughs> you know what I'm saying you know On you never go. know look Look, we, we out here. We out here in these streets of Atlantic City. Um, and so, you know, I, I was thinking this. Now, now that you're on this and you see other people with badges, I don't know. What's your badge say? Newcomer on it? Does it say newcomer? No, it don't. So as you see that, what are some advice that you give to newcomers? And have you seen, like, now that you're kind of on the other side, I, I actually mm-hmm. want people to not feel like I felt yeah. um, early on. So I'm, like, extra welcoming in that because... You know, I knew what it was when I had the newcomer badge. So yep. speak to that other side experience. Sure. Yeah, I think as a newcomer, my biggest suggestion would be to talk to the people in the sessions that you're sitting near, connect with people. Everybody is so welcoming in this organization, which I think is part of the values of sort of like being a family, having a network, um, but also get involved. So if you're looking for those opportunities that may complement some of the things you're doing in your day job, in your nine to five, and you're not necessarily, for example, getting budget experience or getting supervisory experience, use this organization to tap into that skill set so you can leverage those skills and really have a whole um, well-rounded skill set to articulate for your next career move. And also, if you're not sure what that means for you, use this organization to that as well to figure out those those pieces. There's so many opportunities to get involved in different ways, even within the annual conference, for example, itself. There's like subcommittees within that. So tap into some of that. And then likewise, what the organization gives back to you is just unmatched. I love it. Oh, sorry. I muted myself. Um, I'll figure it out. Um, so, <laughs> then, uh, I don't know, you know, I, I think this, maybe we'll do like a quick short take. So, um, Let's do a little thing called shot for shot, and I call that, we'll do more than one, but you get to ask me any random question, I ask you any random question, and we're just going to go back and forth and get to know each other, and then we'll close out. How's that sound? Perfect. All right, you go first. What's a random question you want to ask me? Let's see. What is your biggest fear in the world of work? Oh, there it goes. Oh, that's a good one. Um, So I think my biggest fear in the world of work is doing something that I'm not passionate about and then like uh, going home and then just having no energy at work and then just like, I I never wanted a job where it was just for a paycheck Mm -hmm. and felt like I was just, you know, kind of like the Al Bundy, you know, Mm -hmm. like working at the shoe place and then coming home and unfulfilled. So that's one of my things. And two, you know, uh, impact. Uh, Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of meeting people as they retire or meeting people at the end of their career or just, you know, um, actually, you know, I was doing funeral services for my Omega service. Mm-hmm. And so seeing all these obituaries and it's like, wow, like these people, normal mom, dads, they had very impactful lives and they were good family members what people remember them for. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to have that combination. Like I want to be like known, you know, to my boys and my wife as someone that was like a great father and lifted them up. But also I want to have like an actual substantial mm-hmm impact on whatever work environment like Mm if i worked at mason for you know 20 years and i left they name a building after me and not in a sense that um i want to be like uh legacy building like Mm -hmm. i don't need to be ego stroked but Mm -hmm. i just know that like all this work yes all this work that i did made a difference and it made a a generational difference Mm -hmm. like 
that, like people that have helped at this institution, when I'm gone, things that I put in place are still systems that mm-hmm. are working on, and mm-hmm. that's it. So that yeah. that's yeah. a it's a fear because I like I don't want to like what if I happen today? Yeah. Like if I die today, I don't know if I even got a chance to do any of this mm-hmm. stuff yet. Yeah. That was a good one. That's yeah. pretty deep. Deep. All right. Um, uh, put on your uh, magic hat. What? I got two things. Where do you see yourself in five years as a professional? And then with that same magic hat, where do you see this organization five years? Mm -hmm. Two ideas, you know, individual, macro, micro. Nice. Um, I think individually I see myself growing within a new role I'm transitioning to in a couple of weeks. I'm gaining new skills and tapping into some skills that I really want to continue to build upon. Um, hiring, recruiting new staff members. That's new to me. So that's going to be exciting. I think it's going to really complement some of the current skill sets that I'm hoping to, again, build on and and gain new ones. Um, I think the, the impact of our organization and field and industry in general has that power to continuously be evolving and changing. And we adapt to that and find new ways to meet our students where they're at, our employer partners, um, all of that. And so I think individually, too, I just always want to strive for that challenge and um, see those challenges as opportunities for growth and development throughout, you know, the next five years, whatever that brings. But definitely lots of self-reflection along the way and that growth throughout. Um, As an organization, I see us continuing to innovate, hopefully continuing in-person conferences um, and continuing to meet and exceed some of our strategic goals and vision. Um, I think we're at a neat place where we had to sort of take that step back in the last couple of years through the pandemic and sort of reevaluate our strategies, our efforts, the way we communicate, our ideas, our brand, all of that, and who we bring to the table. I'm hoping that we continue to amplify voices that are represented throughout uh, committees, our community, and our organization at large. So you get to ask me one more question. I'll do one more for me, and then one more for you, and then we'll do a wrap-up. So ask me one more random question. Let's see. What are your personal goals within this organization? Uh, I, I mean, honestly, uh, I want to learn as much in the current board role that I'm mm-hmm. having uh, because I want those skills to be transferable. I've learned so much. I learned about money and budgets. And mm-hmm. so I think personally, I definitely just want this uh, concurrent growth. Like, would I do it, Mason, to bleed over into mm-hmm. Eastern A's? And then what I'm doing in Eastern is to bleed over into mm-hmm. my normal work. So I just want to take every role and, like, do, like, this, you know, tug with it. Like, how is this experience going to help me in my normal 9 to 5? Mm-hmm. But then also pull from things like this podcast and media and what can I contribute to this organization mm-hmm. with that. And I just want to continue to, like, I don't know, just do stuff. I'm a doer. Mm-hmm. So I yeah. think as long as any organization lets me just experiment and be mm-hmm. a mad scientist, yep. Um, that's what I'm looking forward to because nice. it's, it's always growth and I'm learning yeah. new things. This is the first time I actually test this uh, podcast equipment in person with yeah. multiple people like I've yep. done it at home. So like this was an opportunity for me to try something with Eastern Ace, but vice versa. It's going to help me yeah. in my normal life. So I want to continue awesome. to do that. All right. That's my last question for you. You got a, a, a million, you know, a, a gazillion dollar budget and it still has to be within the Eastern Eastern um, region. Besides Baltimore, where would you like to host a conference? Mm, that's a good one. I'm a big beach girl, so I'm thinking like Virginia Beach, but also like I've never been to Maine, so like thinking coast to coast, like maybe something like Portland or Bar Harbor, like just take it all the way north. Um, I think obviously our conferences are in the summer. It's prime time to be north when it's not snowing and things like that. Um, and the weather's nice. I know in terms of access and things like that, it's we try to bounce around north, south, middle. Um, so yeah, I would probably be between Virginia Beach or Portland, Maine. All right, shout out, shout out to Portland. Um, I'm smiling because my mother-in-law, uh, she's from Maine. Uh, awesome. She's refused to take me there. Uh, <laughs> so I told we'll have her, to go. So one day she's going to take me and get lobster rolls. Yeah, um, yeah. And so that's it. Do so the therefore, it is, we're putting that in the, you know, let's put that in the atmosphere. We'll have yeah. a conference. I'll get a free hotel. I'm going to Maine. Shout out to Portland. Manifest. All right. So this is the end of the episode. I call it shout outs and plugs. Shout out anyone you want to show love to and then plugs anything you want the listeners uh, to follow or do and I'll put them in the show notes. So that's it. We're going to wrap up. But shout outs and plugs. The stage is set. It's all you. 
Awesome. Well, I'm going to shout out Joe Milan, president of Eastern Ace, one of my mentors, great friends and colleague. Um, you, Bill Wilkerson, finally meeting in person. Uh, we've done a lot of work together in our committees in our current roles, and I'm excited to continue that work moving forward. Uh, plugs, one, follow our social medias, E-A-C-E-P-R on Twitter and Instagram. We also have Facebook and LinkedIn. And then also, like we said, for the good of the order, if you want to contribute and also gain some valuable experience, join a committee. There you go. And I'm going to put your LinkedIn there, too. Shout out to awesome. you so that you connect with you professionally. Well, Positive Filter listeners, it's been great. You know, whatever. Sorry for the background noise. We out. <laughs> give, give ourselves an applause. I'm just messing around with these buttons. And uh, if you like this, share it with your family and friends. Positivity is a movement. Share this episode. Like, subscribe. Give it some stars and all that. And um, we're out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Positive Filter, a podcast that focuses on family, friends, career with a little self-help along the way if you enjoyed this podcast please share it with your family and friends and like the facebook page spreading positivity of movement thanks for listening